Hi friends, welcome back to Teaching in Room 9, our region's largest classroom. My name is Julia and I'm one of the second grade teachers at the Soulard School. Hi Alchemy. Here for Teaching in Room 9, my lessons focus on math for second grade, but everyone is always encouraged to join. We always start our lessons here by doing a mindfulness activity, some deep breathing, or maybe some yoga or some other sort of calming and relaxing activity in order for us to take a moment to slow down, to try to release some tension that we might be feeling in our bodies. Sometimes we don't even realize when we have tension built up until we take that second to take a deep breath release any of those muscle tensions or anxiety maybe you've been feeling throughout the day, slowing your body down, being aware of your five senses, and really being present in the moment. When we're able to take that time to be present in the moment, it helps us to recenter our body, to focus our bodies and our brains, and uh, allow us to be able to ready to learn today. So, we're gonna do three deep breaths and our last day of clock yoga. You guys ready? Let's try to sit up nice and straight and tall. If you are standing, that's fine too. You're gonna to wanna to stand nice and tall and firm and proud. Your shoulders down, your back nice and straight. Try to loosen up any tension in those shoulders or in your neck. Okay, I'm gonna take three deep breaths in and we're gonna do some clock yoga. Deep breath in through your nose. And out through your mouth. Nice job, breathe in through your nose. And out through your mouth. Last one, breathe in through your nose. One, two, three, and out through your mouth. One, two, three. Now that we're already starting to feel nice and calm and more relaxed, we're going to build a clock above our head with our arms by taking a deep breath, breath in through our nose. Take that clock, clock big and tall. Breathe out through your mouth. Those arms back down. In through your nose. And out through your mouth. In through your nose. And out through your mouth slowly. Your hands back together. Okay, bring your long hand back up at 12, and we're going to take a deep breath in, and when I exhale, we're gonna be that second hand ticking down. Ready, breathe in, tall and straight, just like our long hand, our minute hand, and exhale. Breathe in. And exhale. Last one, breathe in. And exhale. Nice job, friends. I hope you enjoyed doing some clock yoga with me this week. It was just something that I came up with. I know it sounds kind of silly to be doing clock yoga, but when I thought about a clock, I thought about the way that it looks, the um, long hand, the minute hand, is tall and proud as it moves around. That second hand, sometimes if you're really quiet in a room with a clock, you can hear it ticking. And I just thought that focusing on that clock and the way that it's shaped might help us to feel more relaxed and centered so that we can learn together today. All right, friends. So we always start our lessons, too, by reviewing our I can statement. This again is our learning objective for the week. So what are we able to do? It says, I can tell and write time on analog and digital clocks. All right, friends, now that we're towards the end of the week, analog clock, which one is the analog clock? Is that with the short and long hand 
or is that the one with the minutes and the hour written in numbers with the colon in between? Nice, you guys are so good. Analog clock is our big clock that we see over here. We've got our short hand and our long hand, and this is the one where we have to look at those hands in order to find the hour and find the minute. However, when we are looking at a digital clock, digital clocks, down here you can see the hour is written in numbers. A lot of times too, you'll see that zero beforehand, so zero two, and then the minute will be written there, 25. And a lot of times there'll be, um, sometimes it's like a little dot, sometimes it'll say AM or PM, depending on what kind of digital clock you're looking at. But it will usually note in some way, whether it's AM, midnight to noon, or PM, noon to night. All right, friends, so what we're gonna do together here today, we're gonna sing our song again, and I know for sure by now, you guys are amazing at singing the song with me at home. And it's sticking in your brain, so you'll always, always remember how to tell time. So we're gonna sing our song. We're going to review our chart. Then we're going to talk about the steps to solving a word problem because you guys did such an amazing job with doing that yesterday. You were so brave. You stretched your brains in order to try a new learning strategy by uh, using a number line in order to figure out a time word problem. So we're going to do um, something similar today, but instead, if you remember from yesterday, it's counting time by five. So we're going to work on this. I wanna practice some more um, time here uh, by telling, using our um, time practice board, being able to tell the analog version, seeing what the minutes look like, or the hours and the minutes on the digital version too. So I want us to be really good. Now that it's the end of the week, this is our chance to really check for understanding. Are we able to figure out time all by yourself or do we need a little bit more practice? That's um, what teachers like to do to be able to check, say, do I need to spend more time on this or are my kiddos ready to roll and they're good to go and we can move on to something new. So I really wanna make sure that we practice this a lot today so we feel really nice and super comfortable with it so you can feel confident about learning how to tell time. Uh, I also chose to do time in the beginning of the year because in our school, even though we're learning virtually right now, we have analog clocks like this in all of the rooms. They're not digital. So it's really important for my kiddos to be able to look at an analog clock and understand what it looks like as we go through our schedule in the daytime. And so we thought it would be easier for um, us to go through this right in the beginning of the day. So then all of those questions of what time is it and when do we do this or that, they can look and tell and practice it all year long. So by the end of second grade, they will be absolutely amazing at it. So. That's why I chose to do it in the beginning of the year, so that hopefully when we're back in person again uh, soon, <laughs> then uh, our kiddos and you guys at home will all be so amazing at being able to tell time. Okay, you guys ready to sing with me? I know you are. All right, friends, let's do it. Okay. Twenty-four hours in a day, sixty minutes in an hour, sixty seconds in one minute, that's how we measure time. Then there's afternoon and night, it's judged by AM, PM. Midnight to noon would be AM, and noon to night is PM. When you look right at a clock, you'll see a long and short hand. Short will tell you what's the hour, the long will show the minutes. Until the short reaches the next, it's still within the hour. The long hand, you'll start at 12 and just skip count by fives. Yay, you guys did amazing with singing along with me all week. I hope it is stuck in your brain. I know for sure it is stuck in my brain. So hopefully you guys will always remember how to tell time. So again, we're gonna go through our chart and our song again, um, just so we're super confident and ready to roll. So in the very beginning of our song, it talks about the units of time. 24 hours in a day. That's where we go all the way around the clock, two times. 12 plus 12 is the same as 24 hours. 12 a.m., 12 p.m. gives us 24 hours in a day, 60 minutes in an hour. So when it goes all the way around, it's been a full 60 minutes. And we can see that right up here by the 60 above the 12. So 60 minutes, same as, equal to 
one hour. Then we talked about that second hand when we were doing that yoga, that it'll do that 60 times, 60 seconds in just one minute. So you can count to 60 and then the uh, minute hand will go over just one. So 24 hours in a day, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in one minute. And then, then there's afternoon and night, it's judged by AM, PM. And then so we talked about it, midnight to noon, that is AM, and noon to night is PM. And something to help us that we read about in our story and we also had done in our anchor chart is to remember about activities that we do in the AM versus the PM so that we don't forget which is which. So here we have midnight to noon, AM, so that's morning time. What are some things that we do in the morning? Eat breakfast, wake up, get ready to go to school, brush our teeth, get dressed. And then I also told my friends to think about maybe your school day too. What are some of the activities that you have in the morning before noon or before lunch? And then over here, PM, noon tonight, what are some things that you do in the evening? I had mentioned maybe some after school activities once those start back up again. Um, like sports and dance and all those different cool things that kiddos do. Um, a lot of times those happen right after school. So that would be a good indicator of what is PM. Um, also eating dinner, getting ready for bed, brushing your teeth, putting on your PJs. Those are activities that happen in the PM. All right, now how do we tell time? When you look right at a clock, you'll see a long hand, short hand, the short will tell you what's the hour where the long will show the minutes hour. That's our pink one here, shorthand, 12 hours on a clock. In order to find it, we look at the shorthand and then we find the number that it's either right at or just past. Until the short reaches the next, it's still within the hour. So two, until it goes all the way to three, even if it's just slightly above, still two. It has to be right on three for it to be the next hour. Same thing, all the way right on four for it to be the next hour. And then we look at the minute hands, the long hand, we start at 12 and we skip count by fives. That's why we've got all our post-its here. Can you guys help me at home skip count by, skip by fives all the way up to 60? So we know how many minutes are in an hour. Ready? I'm gonna point to them as we go. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Nice job. And then we started practicing even harder. What if it is, we found the hour, but we're looking at the minutes, but it's not right on a five. So say it is right here at the seven, but it's just a little bit past. So seven we can see is 35 minutes. And if it is two past, then we'd say 35, count up to up two more, 35, 36, 37. So we'd know that the minutes are 37. So that's what we're gonna practice again here today. All right, I think we covered it. So we reviewed our chart, we've sang our song. Now we're gonna go back to our time word problem story. And then we'll practice some more on our time board here at the end of our lesson. All righty, friends. So we had learned, or reviewed at least, in our, um, in our story here, Time Word Problems, about the different steps. There's five different steps when you're solving a word problem. And we also talked about how there's lots of different types of word problems, right? We know that you can be adding, subtracting. Eventually, you can work with multiplication or division. You might be working with money, time, measurement, shapes, fractions, all sorts of different stuff. So we have to follow this same pattern for us to figure out what the answer to our word problem is. We also talked about really taking our time because whenever you rush through something, whether it's a word problem in math, reading through a passage in English or ELA, uh, no matter what it is, if you rush through it, you can get a very different answer, especially when we're working with numbers. So we really wanna take our time going through each step. So number one, what is it asking? What is the problem asking us to find out? And the important thing is, is to look for clues. And remember, I said, when I come across a clue or a keyword or a number that I know is gonna be really important in our problem, I do this. I circle it. 
So then as I'm going, I can just come back and look at the numbers really quick and I don't have to worry about reading all those extra words in between. Then we're gonna figure out whether or not we are adding or subtracting. Later on, we might be multiplying or dividing, but right now it's gonna either be addition or subtraction. Then number three is we have to figure out what strategy we are going to use. And again, we talked about how we like to keep a lot of different strategies in our math toolbox, in our math brain, so that we can figure out what makes the most sense to our own brains. Because what makes sense to my brain might not make as much sense to your brain. So you have to practice different strategies so you know what makes sense to you. So when we're dealing with um, time word problems, we're either gonna be solving by uh, using a clock, which is what we're gonna be doing today, uh, a number line, which is what we did yesterday, or a number sentence, which is another way to say an equation. And then my favorite step, do math, right? That's the most important one. You have to do the math, but we have to make sure that we have all the information right up until we get to this point. And then even still, after we do math, we have to check our answer, right? Sometimes if we do the math too quickly, we might make a mistake. So we have to check our answer to see if it makes sense. So these five steps are what we're gonna be used to, using to go through word problems together. So today we are focusing on counting time by fives. And here you can see it, I see a truck right here, I see some clocks right here, and just by our big bold heading here, counting time by fives, I know that we're gonna be using a clock to solve our problem, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and read to you this uh, word problem right here. It says word problem number two. It is now 10.50 a.m. Right now my math brain is saying, Shh, I would circle that number. A delivery truck will bring some new clocks to the store in 25 minutes. What time will it be when the truck arrives at the store? Then it says, do you see any clue words in the problem? What do you guys think? Yeah, it says they, they are, will it be? It says, what time will it be right here when the truck arrives? Will it be means it hasn't happened yet, so we know that we are adding. These words tell the children they need to add. Okay, if it was a time in the past, we would be subtracting. But since it says will be, we know that we're going to be adding. So it's at 10.50 a.m. We've got 25 minutes. What time is it gonna be when the delivery truck gets there? Mr. Tucker says they will add in groups of five minutes. And that's an easy way to solve this one too because we're dealing with like solid fives. 10.50 is right on here. 25 minutes, that's a solid five. Okay, so that's a good uh, strategy for us to solve this problem is to skip count by fives on the clock. Malcolm says he can count by fives. I know my friends can count by fives too. Mr. Tucker says counting time by fives is different from counting objects. He draws a clock. So I'm gonna do the same thing as Mr. Tucker and I'm gonna draw a clock on our board so you can see it really nice and easy. Go too crazy. All right, so he draws the analog clock and then he writes numbers around the clock. All right, what goes at the very top of the clock? You got it. 12, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and we are back at 12. Now I'm just gonna put the little tick marks around it so it's really nice and clear for us and we can see how we are going to skip count by fives in order to solve our word problem. Can you guys see my clock nice and easy right there? Nice job, friends. Okay, so he, he writes the numbers by five minute intervals. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, and 55. So I'm gonna show you here, put this down for one sec. Okay, then it says, Mr. Tucker writes zero. So right here, you can see where he wrote those time intervals by five. It's the exact same way I wrote these by fives all the way around. It's the same idea. 
When we reach 60 minutes, we add an hour and start the minutes back to zero. So five minutes after 155 is two. 10 minutes after 155 is 205. The children use the clock Mr. Tucker has drawn. They start counting at 1050. They count to 25 by fives. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. And we're gonna see if we get the same answer as our friends in our story. So if we know that our important clue word was 1050, so now we need to make 1050 on the clock. What do we use first? The long hand or the short hand? The long hand being the minutes, the short hand is the hour. You guys are so smart. Short hand, hour. Hour always comes first. So we know it's 1055. So my hour hand is going to be pretty close to 11 because 1055 is only five minutes away from 11 o'clock. So my hour hand is almost, but not quite, to the 11. And then we know we have to um, put our minute hand at 55. So we're gonna start at the 12 and skip count by fives, right? The long hand you'll start at 12 and just skip count by fives. So start at 12, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. We found it. So my long hand is going to point right at the 11. So this is what my clock. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not 1050. It's 1050. I'm sorry. 1050. Whoopsies. Okay. So it's not 55 at the 11, I'm sorry, it's at the 10. But it's still only 10 minutes away from 11. So our hour hand is still gonna be pretty close to that 11. But this is what our time will look like at 10, right? Until the short reaches the next, it's still within the hour. So it's still 10, even though it's very close to 11. And then 50 is 5, 10, 50, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. 10, 50, got it? All right, now we have to count 25 minutes. We're going to skip count by fives. So you guys ready? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Now I can stop. I skip counted by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. So what time is it? Now it's not this time anymore. Okay, we went past 12, so I know it's not within the hour anymore. It's a new hour. So it's not pointing almost at the 11, it is 11. So my long hand points at 11, and or I'm sorry, my short hand points at 11, the hour, and my long hand points at that three, right? Right there. Okay, so what time is it, friends? when the delivery truck reaches the store. We go hour first, pointing at 11, yep, 11. I'm gonna show you in digital as well. And then the three is five, 10, 15, nice job. So it, the delivery truck is coming at 11, 15. And we knew it was at the, um, the time at, at the beginning was at 10.50 and it was a.m. So we know it is 11.15 and it is still a.m. Once it reaches 12, it will be noon and then we'll switch to p.m. But our clock comes, or I'm sorry, our truck comes at 25 minutes and the answer was 11.15. You guys are amazing. I'm so impressed with how hard you've been working all week to tell time, to try different strategies, to solve word problems to add math strategies to your math brain toolbox, to stretch your brain and try new problems, to work through all those five steps of solving a word problem. I'm just so impressed. You guys have done such an amazing job. All right, let's practice a couple problems on here. And then something kind of cool that I love about nonfiction books is that at the very end, you'll find a text feature called the glossary. I'd like to review some of these uh, definitions and vocabulary words because they're important to remembering um, information about time. But first, let's practice. All right, have all my blank here. I'm gonna put this with the hour. 
Okay, that works there. Let's put this. Okay, here we go. You see my time there? Which one do I start at first? Do I look at my shorthand the hour or the longhand the minute? You're so smart. Shorthand. Now, until the shorthand reaches the next, it's still within the hour. So it is what? You got it. Five. It's not at six yet. So zero, five. Now we got to look at our minutes, our longhand. And we skip count by five starting at 12, but I can't even count to five because it's only just a few minutes past. So we just count those little ticks. One, two, three. Nice job. So it is 503. And when, and when we're practicing these, we don't really know whether they're AM or PM, but based on whatever activity is happening, then we could maybe decide. 503. Let's try another one. Okay. All righty. We start with the shorthand, the hour, which is a little bit past the seven, but until it reaches the next, it's still within the hour. So we know our hour is seven, and then our shorthand, we start at 12, five, or I'm sorry, a longhand, five, 10, 15, 20, and then count up, 21, 22, 20, Three. It is 7.23. All right. And to review in our glossary, some of the words that we talked about are a.m. Midnight to noon, that is a.m. And noon to night is p.m. We talked about an analog clock, which has the short and long hands. The colon is what separates the hour and the minutes in a digital clock. A digital clock is where it shows it in numbers instead of looking at the hands. The face of a clock is just the front. I think of the face of the front or the face of your watch. Um, we talked about midnight and noon. We talked about using a number line and counting our jumps in order for us to find our answer. And we talked about adding and subtracting. Adding is when you put two numbers together to figure out how many you have all together. And subtracting is when you take away and you wanna figure out the difference. Really nice job this week, friends. I'm super impressed. Thank you for working so hard with me. I hope you have a great rest of your week and I'll see you next time. Bye. Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.